Today, we're gonna to cover seven tips on using your tripod to get better landscape photos. So today, we're gonna to talk about tripods. As you can see from many of my photos, I tend to use a tripod on a lot of my landscape photography. But why is that? Well, the primary reason is because the tripod provides a stable base to work from. That's its entire purpose, is to give you a solid platform to set your camera on to take your photos. Now, why is that important? Well, in landscape photography, we want to try to keep that ISO low, and to do that many times in order to get the depth of field we want with the right aperture, that means we're going to need a longer shutter speed. And most of those longer shutter speeds, I'm not stable enough to hold, so I need to use a tripod. So that's one of the reasons. Tripod provides a stable base, so it allows me to use a lower ISO so that I can have longer shutter speeds to get cleaner images. Another reason is, you see, I like to photograph a lot of waterfalls, and a lot of those are going to be long exposures to get the creative effect I want on the water. Again, that creative effect is typically driven by the shutter speed and a slightly longer shutter speed than I can handhold comfortably. So a tripod is very useful in that situation as well. And finally, a lot of times I find using a tripod makes me more deliberate in my photography. Because there's some setup involved, I tend to think a little bit more about my composition before I just get the tripod out and start photographing. So it makes me a little bit more deliberate. So those are the reasons why I use a tripod and why I think they're important for landscape photography. And today we're going to look at seven tips on how to use your tripod more effectively. So my first tip doesn't even actually involve the tripod, but it involves what you do when you show up to a scene. And that is, instead of getting the tripod right out and starting to set it up and probably having to change the height of it, move it around, change the leg, leg length multiple times, move around with your, just your camera and look at the different angles, try the different camera heights to find your composition. Once you find your composition, then get the tripod out. You're going to know what height do you want your camera at. Do you want it low? Do you want it high? you want an eye level, which leads to less fiddling with the tripod, and that ultimately makes it easier to be out in the field with the tripod and using it more efficiently. So once you've found your composition, if it's a lower composition where you're not going to need the full height of your tripod, start by extending your tripod legs at the thicker side of the, the tripod. These thicker tubes will have more stability than the lower side, which are thinner and not as much stability. There are cases where you'd want to use these if you're going full height, and some other situations we'll look at a little later. But for the most part, if you're not doing a full height, make sure to start with extending the thicker legs. If you just need one section extended, just extend that top section. If you're going to need more of a mid-height, then you can extend both, but just make sure it's the, the first thickest and the next thickest that you're extending unless you need that full height. And that'll help get you more stability out of your tripod. So take advantage of using those thicker legs of the tripod whenever the situation permits. Okay, so tip three is sort of an exception to tip two. Tip two, we talked about extending the thicker portions of the tripod legs first. Tip three is, is if you're in certain conditions, it makes more sense to extend the smallest leg first, the smallest section of the tripod first. Those conditions are if it's really muddy, lots of water, or lots of sand, so like a seascape or something like that. And the reason to do that is if you undo and lower this, it helps keep your twist locks or your flip locks out of the sand, muck, and dirt, and keeps them from getting contaminated with dirt, debris, salt water, and things like that. So you can extend your lower section, which then goes down, and the only thing getting put in that mud, water, sand, or anything like that is that section of leg at the bottom, the foot, but not the Tri not the twist locks or the flip locks of the tripod. So it can keep your tripod better. We'll cover tripod cleaning in another video in case you do get those all in muck, sand, and everything like that. But in general, if you're putting them down in water, mud, just extend that lower section, keeps your twist locks out, keeps sand and debris out of your twist or flip locks, and helps the life of the tripod. Okay, and another tip is as you're opening the tripod legs, make sure you spread them all the way out. A lot of times I'll see someone with one leg sort of not all the way out, or even all of the legs not all the way out. And you're really robbing yourself of the stability of the tripod if you're not extending them all the way out. So when you set up your tripod, whether it's short or tall, all the way up, make sure to spread those legs all the way out so that they're completely spread out. That helps improve the stability of the tripod to make sure you're on the most stable platform you can be. For example, here the tripod legs are not spread completely out. They come down narrower, and you just don't have quite the stability that you should versus opening them completely like that, gives you a much wider base, makes the tripod more stable and better for your landscape photography photos. Okay, when it comes to setting the tripod and then putting the camera on top, another tip is to keep the leading leg pointed 
in the direction you're shooting. That does a couple things. One, if you're on a longer lens up here, it helps give you a little bit more stability so that if the lens is a little front heavy or anything like that, it keeps the nice support under it. The other thing it does is while you're working back here behind the camera, you're not having to trip over that leg, bump it, or anything like that. So it just makes it easier to work around. So tripod set up, nice, stable, legs fully spread. When you put the camera on it, point the front leg towards what you're shooting so that, that way the lens is over it, helping get, take advantage of some of that extra stability, as well as making your job a little easier when you're back here with not having to trip over the leg. Okay, tip number six is about setting up on a hill. On a hill, I see lots of people sort of rely on their ball head to get their camera straight, and that's just not good. You really want your base platform to be stable. So typically what I'll do is I'll put one leg uphill this way, and this leg will get shortened because the hill is going up this way. So I'll shorten that leg so I can pull the tripod back, get a nice base on here. If I adjust this just a little bit more, I have a little level right here, make sure everything is good. I have two legs up front just to help make sure things are all nice and stable and set up this way to take your shot. So when photographing on a hill with your tripod, which happens a lot in landscape photography, make sure to take the time to shorten the uphill leg so that you get that platform. What you don't want to do is have everything all extended like you're on even ground like that and then trying to use the ball head. Can I get my camera straight? Yep. But look at this. Super tippy. Super tippy. It makes it real easy for the camera to fall over. Whereas if I shorten the leg, my uphill leg, bring that tripod back, use the level on the tripod for a little bit of a gauge. Now I have my base platform nice, stable, and level, and things aren't nearly as topsy-turvy, anything like that. So that's what you want to do when you're shooting on a hill, is make sure to take the time to shorten that uphill leg, make sure you get that level on your tripod level, gives you a nice solid base to work from, nice and stable, way less likely to have your camera go tumbling down a hill. So tip number six, shooting on a hill. So tip number seven is for photographers that use tripods with center columns. We've talked about some of the pros and cons about center columns in another video, but if you've chosen there's more pros than cons in using a center column, tip number seven is for you. And what it is is don't start raising the center column until you max out the length of your legs. Make sure they're fully extended because your tripod legs fully extended will get you more stability and better stability than starting to raise the center column. Now, if you fully max out the extension of your legs and you still need more height, by all means, you know, raise the center column a bit. Try to raise it the least amount as possible because the higher it gets, the less stable your tripod becomes because it's sort of like balancing a monopod on top of a tripod. But that's tip number seven. Only start extending your center column if you max out the height you can get from your legs. So those are the seven tips to help use your tripod more effectively in landscape photography. I hope you found those tips helpful. And if you did, please hit that like button. And if you want to see future landscape photography content from me, including tips, tricks, behind the scenes, mini gear reviews, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any landscape photography content from me in the future. And thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.